staying with this issue, we're going to bring in Brendan Kieran Brown in Belfast. He's an Associate Professor of Conflict Resolution and Reconciliation at Trinity College. Brendan, good to have you on this program. We were speaking to our correspondent in Jenin just a little bit earlier. She was outside the hospital saying this is one of the few areas where people actually feel safe from any Israeli bombing. And while she was there, clashes were ongoing. We saw it all on camera. Uh, this really speaks to where Israel seems to be targeting. The UN itself says that its first responders can't get to people in need in Jenin, that Israel is preventing this. What can the international community do here? Because surely Israel's actions go against international law. Yeah, well, first and foremost, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm sending all of my uh, solidarity and good wishes to my friends uh, in Palestine who are going through this horrendous uh, period of uh, unchecked Israeli violence that is being meted out. These aren't clashes. These are targeted assaults on civilians, targeted assaults on infrastructure. I mean, we've seen pictures coming out of Janine that have highlighted the extent to which the Israeli regime is completely determined to make Janine unlivable and to make Palestinian life in Janine unbearable. I mean, you saw the pictures coming from the hospital and people being attacked in the hospital with tear gas. I mean, this is absolutely outrageous. And when we talk about the international community, the international community is absolutely responsible for what is happening here by failing by failing categorically to call out Israel for what it is doing, for failing to hold this rogue nation state accountable and allowing this type of activity to go unchecked. I mean, if you swap Israel for Russia or for Belarus, you would see an incredibly different response. And the simple fact of the matter is that when it comes to the international community, Palestinian lives, Palestinian livelihoods, Palestinian desires to live and grow and be free just does not seem to matter. So Palestinians and their comrades know that there is nothing to be gained from the international community. We have decades long of experience of being completely disillusioned. So what you're basically saying is that Palestinians are on their own and as we see here, they have to take matters into their own hands. And uh, people at that refugee camp in Jenin, so many of them have now been forced to leave their homes, which was already a refugee camp, they're again displaced. Where do they go to for safety? Well, that's a million dollar question. As you rightly said, these are people who were displaced during uh, the Nakba in 48 and subsequent displacement moments afterwards who have long harbored uh, desires to return home, desires to live a peaceful, fruitful life. Um, and as you said, yes, absolutely. What the international community has shown that it is not willing in any shape or form to provide any support. And so what do you expect people to do? Uh, essentially, what, what we're saying is we expect Palestinians to die quietly. That's essentially what the international community are doing by their abdication of responsibility. And of course, there are many organizations and international organizations that are doing all they can on the ground to help and to provide support services. But this is a political issue um, and it needs a political resolution. It needs the international community to step up, to weigh in, to not speak out of both sides of its mouth when it comes to what's actually happening on the ground. How do you get a political solution, though, when you have a government in Israel that is now the most right-wing it's ever been? Settler expansion is very much on the agenda, and that expansion is going unchecked. You've got the UN and the US who say the expansion is legal, but effectively it's talk. It's no action. Absolutely, and it, it's going to take it's going to take pressure. I mean, there's an incredibly vibrant international grassroots solidarity campaign that is here, that is active, that is agitating to hold governments to account. We need to make sure very clearly that the Israeli government does not enjoy the inoculative protection of the international community and is not allowed to get away with doing these type of things unchecked. And that adds then political pressure. If you make it very clear, very clear that the actions of the Israeli state make them a pariah, that you begin to implement some kind of sanctions, boycott and divestment. If you begin to close down 
spaces for the Israeli government to take part in other events or uh, just in, in much the way that you have done or you've seen in the West when it comes to Russia, then that is a way of putting political pressure. Uh, do I think that is going to happen anytime soon? I'm not sure. But what I would say is that the people are not the government and the people across the world, especially here in Ireland, we see what is happening. We stand with the Palestinian people and their right to defend themselves. Brendan Kieran Brown, live there from Belfast. Thank you so much for your input.